as you all know, every Wednesday we have a live studio audience. Um, and I really want to be able to have somebody chime in on this topic mm. because it has a lot of layers, right? It's real. You have, and it is, like you said, it is very much real and it's a lot of things that we just don't see. So I'm going to um, take it over to a live in-studio audience who is actually our very own writer and a comedian, Dom Smith, who's going to ask you all the questions. So Dom, thank you so much, Dom, for chiming in on this topic. I'm definitely excited to have you. What's your question for us? Uh, first of all, thank you guys for having me. Um, I am a very big Chris Rock fan. Um, there's this video online of Chris getting interviewed by Kevin Hart. And Chris says that you know after he did Bring the Pain, that kind of catapulted him to superstardom. After that, he was on like 60 Minutes, Oprah, all these other white outlets. And people started calling him, oh, only white people like him. So in response to that, he decided to make you know bigger and blacker. He's going to film a special in Harlem at the Apollo um, and try to make the blackest special ever. Uh, so with specials like Bigger and Blacker, um, he's been in New Jack City. He's hosted Def Comedy Jam. He's hosted the BET Awards. He's also, you know, like Pierre spoken to, given opportunities to other black comedians like, you know, Bernie Mac, Wanda Sykes, J.B. Smoove. Um, where did this narrative of Chris Rock, or I should say, when did this narrative of Chris Rock pandering to white people happen if he's done all these black things? Um, that's, that's a very good question, Dom. Very good question. I feel sometimes if we see success from a what we consider a white outlet, we automatically make you white. Um, you know, 60 Minutes is a white outlet. Let's be honest, Oprah Winfrey was kind of a white outlet. She, you know, garnered most of her stuff to white women and so forth. Um, certain news programs, when we see you get success from there, automatically we think that you're white now, you're only accepted by white people, and we kind of digress. Opposed to if he got if he had been on BT getting interviewed or some hip hop show, more, you know, more of the grimier, and not grimier, whatever you want to call it, more urban um, uh, um, outlets were interviewing him, he would have uh, maybe been looked at differently. But if you listen to his material, let's do, you know, side of, uh, he spoke a lot on stuff that's very interesting, you know, about the black community and stuff we're going through. But he was, to me, he was one of the first ones of my generation that came out and started talking about racism. Because Def Comedy Jam, a lot of comics didn't do that. We were dancing and flipping and jumping and doing fucking jokes and all that. He was one of the cats in the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s, that my generation that came out and was talking about politics and um, you know, and racism and so forth. You gotta remember that. He was one of the first ones, you know, and one of the ones that put the most shine on it. Um, so yeah, so that's why that's probably why, because of the outlets were mostly white, they gave him praise and stuff. And you know, yeah, you know, that's you got to give him respect for that. That's major. 